Social Media Time, Corbin. I'm Alexis. I'm Rick. And please follow us on Instagram and Twitter uh, for more juicy <laughs> content. It's so juicy. Uh, and thank you for support us on Patreon. Yes. Exclusive content on there. Everything up there is before it's uploaded here. It's true, if you didn't know that. And follow us on official Twitter account because yep. it's awesome. <laughs> uh, today, because Alexis is here. Uh oh. We are reacting to a run video. video. I knew that was coming. And this one. Is, is this a music video or a trailer or a. No, it is the full story of Ranveer. Oh, really? Yep. He, oh, that's he, great. He, Look at her. He, ah, she's so happy. He talks in it. <gasps> Woohoo! So here we go. I am Ranveer Singh. Yeah, you are. <laughs> I feel incredibly blessed to be where I am today. Films are revered in India. So every young person in India wants to be a hero. You know, in, in India they don't call them actors, they call them heroes. And for somebody in my position, an outsider, it was near to impossible to actually get a foot into the Hindi film industry because you could only become a leading man if you had a familial connection or if you were the son of a producer or a director or you were a star kid. If you think about it realistically, um, I couldn't get there. Around the age of 15, I sort of abandoned my dream of becoming an actor and I pursued becoming a copywriter. I went to America to study advertising. I think in the second year, by chance, I took an acting course. And on the first day, the um, instructor said, I don't want to know who you are, where you're from. I just want you to get up in front of the class and perform. And when I went up and I started reciting a famous monologue, and it was in Hindi, and nobody in the class understood Hindi, but I said it with a great deal of passion. Yeah. So everybody was taken aback. And when I saw that I could perform and evoke an emotional reaction out of a viewing audience, it was beautiful. I felt that rush. And I sat back in my seat and I said, why am I not doing this? I can accept failing, but yeah. I can't accept not trying. Heck yeah. So I called my dad and I said, this is what I'm gonna do. So he said, one condition, you complete your education so you have something to fall back on. So I finished my education and I came back and I was like, well, here I am. But how do I do this? I have no idea. <laughs> I thought maybe I should get a job which takes me to an actual film set. Good job. At That's least I'll be closer to films. So I went to that set thinking maybe I'll be attracted to being a cameraman, a technician, or an editor. I love We were this. shooting that day in an auditorium. I looked from right to left, and all the work that goes into a production was going on. And, and there, there was the mark of the actor. And that superstar used to walk in with that kind of charismatic aura. How he goes inside and he gets ready, he comes out, he's in character, and then he goes and he performs, and everybody loves it, and he spreads cheer and happiness. And I was like, there, that's where I need to be. So I tried to join a theater group. No theater group wanted me, but I used to, I used to make myself useful. I used to pull up chairs for people and yes. bring the actors tea, turn yes. the lights off. Sorry. The point that I became indispensable to that theater group. I used to put the set up, oh, break the set down, load so big trunks into the truck. I was basically the runner. And I remember sitting outside and, and they said, oh, you know what? There's a, there's a film being shot next door. And I was like, what am I doing here? So I had to make a calling card, what they, what they call the actor's portfolio, you know, headshots. I pulled a favor from my father's friend who had a printing press. I would go to his place in the middle of the night, take those pictures, make them myself. I used to steal numbers from people's phones to call filmmakers. <laughs> I used to go from office to office, waiting for them all day, give my portfolio hope that I'd get a call back. I faced a lot of rejection, a lot of humiliation. Yep. It was a difficult period. I had dedicated my life to this and it just seemed like it would never happen. I don't know what was driving me. I think it was just self-belief. I believed that I was good. 
And one day I got a call and they said it's for this audition and they were actually looking for a new face. Yeah. This is it, this is the day you've been waiting for. It's right there and you have to seize it. There is a Gurudwara on the way and I went to that Gurudwara and that audition went well. The biggest break that one could possibly imagine I had just got. My legs gave way and I slumped down to my knees and I started bawling. Oh, there it is. Oh, I love him. And I went to my best friend's house. She was actually the one who got me the audition. And I showed her the script in my hand. I was like, look at this. <laughs> I was like, can you believe this? Went to the church and said, thank you. I'll never forget that day. We celebrated, we danced. And then I did the movie and it became a hit. There was just an avalanche of attention. They were like, who is this new guy? He's an amazing actor. And it was it was overnight. Friday the movie released. On Monday I was famous. And the next thing you know, I find myself at an awards function receiving the best debut award from a mega star. It was like a dream. When I'm on a film set, at least once a day, I have some experience like some fan interaction or, or a moment on the film set or something happens almost every day it gives me that same surreal feeling which makes me feel like I'm living a dream. I guess that's what you get for pursuing your passion and being brave about it. star that never happens <laughs> i'd like to know what year that was because <laughs> oh, yeah. it, it, it just doesn't happen mm -hmm. in hollywood anymore the fact that they've just um, unless it's tv they'll sometimes do it there but yeah. in, in a film it, it'll it'll happen if somebody with the power to tell studios i want a new face can do it because mm -hmm. that's the only time a studio is going to say okay mm -hmm. you've got to be used to happen all the, all time. the time so when a, when a powerful director says i want a new face they get it with a studio uh, not powerful directors get whoever the studio says they want when it comes to the, the, the heart of a lead f in the film. They almost always want names, always. Yeah. Mm. So, what do you think? I love him. Yeah. Not just because he's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like most truly beautiful people, his beauty is because of who he is inside. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I, we saw it in his work. We've yeah. seen it in his work. The passion that comes out of that guy and I've seen people, we've made comparisons to him and other actors, and there's people who've said, like, for example, yeah, if you're having one role, they would never go up for the same role. But Nawazuddin is of a completely different breed. Mm -hmm. But so is Daniel Day-Lewis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not fair to take actors... I, there, no actor should be compared to Daniel. Mm -hmm. right. that's, that's just, he's that rare. Mm -hmm. But don't discount them because they're not him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I, I would rather see an actor who may not have the breadth of scope of characterization and interpretation and believability that just draws me to them with that mystical way that a, a Nawazuddin or a Daniel Day-Lewis does. Give me a guy like that who loves what he's doing and is thankful for it and is humble and puts everything he's got into it. Mm -hmm. And like, like, if every actor were that way, there'd be so less bad acting because <laughs> you can take an actor that isn't very good mm -hmm. but if they're passionate about getting better you may not like this reference you know who i'm going to reference the rock the rock mm. he's still a bad actor okay but the guy came to it 
Arnold Schwarzenegger is another example. No acting capability of any kind, but the guys... Still doesn't. Dwayne Johnson's motto is, I'm the hardest worker in the room. And while I see flaws in his work, he's getting better with each thing that he does. Yeah, but I could go to a uh, computer software uh, course or whatever, and I could be the hardest worker in the room, but I would still suck. True. However, so. however, that... You still need talent. You do. And he has a le there is a level of talent enough that's there. I'm not comparing Ranveer to. to oh, those I'm guys. not talking about Ranveer. He's you a much know better I love Ranveer. <laughs> and and the thing the thing about him that I love besides his humility and his thankfulness is the fact that the guy did what every actor ought to do. That's the first. Like I had somebody recently say to me, I I, I want to get into acting. What what should I do? Well, if you live here in L.A., call Central Casting. Mm -hmm. Do background work. Mm -hmm. Because you need to get acclimated to what it feels like on a set. You need to see it's a collaborative effort. That it's not just about the actors. Mm -hmm. And you need to know where you're going. You need to know where base camp is and where craft services is. And you need to be aware of that and learn that. And you need to pay your freaking dues. Mm -hmm. And if you think you're above being a background actor. <laughs> if you think you're above being in a theater group and setting up chairs. The fact that that like just to be in the theater and setting the set up. And, mm -hmm. and putting the just to, to be around it. Mm -hmm. That's that's. He That's is, an actor. He is definitely a um, uh, anomaly uh, because he was like he was talking about, especially in India. In they, India, they have a huge problem with nepotism. Right, um, and so that's why much he's bigger than most. even here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Much bigger. And it, obviously, it's here a lot too. Yeah, it's <laughs> in every industry. Yeah, yeah it's in you, every industry. You have to know somebody. It's just yeah, the nature. It's of in it. every industry. Um, but yeah, they he's like such an anomaly because it doesn't happen a lot. Him, Nawazuddin's a huge anomaly. Right. He was working for fifteen years yep. before he became a name. Kind of like it was a Steve Carell kind of story. Right. Exactly. Um, and I just, I, I just, I think this guy is grounded. I think this guy is is humble, and I think this guy is always going to be grateful. I mean, the, the freshness of his emotion was as if it just happened. And in fact, his emotion's probably even deeper now than it was the day he got the big role. Mm -hmm. Because the longer his career goes, and the more celebrated he becomes, and the more successes he gets, he's going to become even more humble, because he's going to think, I just, I just wanted to act. I, I, mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. This is beyond anything I could have imagined. So I, yeah. I love him. Yeah, he's awesome. Just love him. Let us know what other Ryan Veer or other videos, other like, videos this, like, like this. Man, I'd love every single person we know from cool. yeah. Indian film to do this. Nawazuddin has one. That'd be great. I would love to know that man. Any story. of them. Yeah, this is great.